Hi, this is Abaya from FinQuest Institute. In this video, we will understand the concept of a Dutch auction process. A Dutch auction process is one of the ways in which a company can issue shares to the public. So we know that whenever a privately held company wishes to raise money from the public, that is, it wishes to sh issue equity shares, which can be purchased by, uh, by potential investors, they can either go in for an IPO, which we call as the initial public offering, or they may decide to go the Dutch auction process way. So IPO is something which will be discussed in a separate video. We will discuss the Dutch auction process here. So the main idea behind Dutch auction process is the company who wishes to raise equity capital will indicate that they wish to raise X number of shares. So the market participants who are interested in taking a position or who are interested in purchasing the equity shares which the company is planning to issue, they will place their respective bids. So they are going to indicate what is the number of shares and what is the price at which they are willing to purchase the shares. So once the bids from all of the interested market participants are received, they will be collated by the company and it will be analyzed. So the analysis is simple. So what we look at is we look at those parties who have bid the highest price for that particular share. So we arrange them as per that priority. So those are, who are bidding uh, the uh, a higher level come in come at the top of the pecking order. So essentially we are following a descending order, you can say, uh, from a price perspective. But finally, the price at which the equity shares will be allocated to the winning, uh, winning uh, market participants will be the lowest price or lowest bid which leads to a complete allocation of the number of shares uh, which are to be offered by the company. Now, let's try to understand this through a simple example. Let's say a certain firm plans to issue 700,000 shares and they wish to use the Dutch auction process. Imagine that we have five counterparties who are bidding and these are the parties who are interested in purchasing these shares. Of course, now uh, no one is bidding for entire 700,000, but they are bidding for different units of shares. And each party has indicated that uh, they will be bidding at a certain price. So for party X, for example, they are interested in bidding for 100,000 shares of the company and they will be willing to bid it at a, dollars of, uh, at a price of $32 per share. Now, as per the Dutch auction, we will be looking at the buyers from a descending order or we will look at the buyers or we'll arrange them in such a way that those who have bid the highest price come at the top of the pecking order. So if we look at these bids and the prices, we know that parties X, W, Y and Z, these are the four parties who will be receiving shares and the price at which they will be receiving is the lowest bid which leads to a complete allocation of the number of shares which are outstanding. So if we look at the price list here, the lowest price as per the four counterparties, which you have listed here. So we'll talk a bit about these as well. For Z is 30. So that's why we say that the allocation price will be 30. Now, how do we decide how, how exactly the shares will be allocated? So that will be dependent on the size of the bid. So we start with the party who has bid the highest price. So party X has bid $32 per share. So their requirement is satisfied first. So party X will be allocated 100,000 shares. Next, we look at which is the next highest bid, which comes from party W. They had bid for 31.5. So they will be allocated 200,000 shares. Next in the pecking order comes party Y who had bid it at 31. So they will be allocated 300,000 shares. So up till now, how many number of shares have, have we allocated? 100,000 for X, 300,000 for Y, and 200,000 for W. So 3 plus 5, 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus 1, 6. So 600,000 shares have been uh, earmarked to be allocated to these respective parties. There is still a gap of 100,000 shares because our target is 700,000 and we are currently at 600,000 after adding these three units. Now we look at the next entity who has bid the highest price, which is party Z and they have bid it at 30. So this becomes now, uh, of course, Z has bid for 400,000, but now there is not so much of quantum of shares available, isn't it? 
because the only quantum which is remaining is 100,000 because the total requirement was 700,000 and out of this 600,000 have already been earmarked for parties X, W and Y. So all that remains is 100,000. So party Z will be allocated 100,000 shares and and each of the parties are going to be offered the shares at a price of $30 because this is the lowest bid at which the complete allocation of the shares happens. So this is the explanation given here. Parties X, W and Y will receive the number of shares they have bid for. Party Z will receive only 100,000 because although they have bid for 400,000, there aren't these many outstanding shares. So only 100,000 will be allocated to Z. So this is in brief the process of Dutch auction. Now a couple of advantages pertaining to Dutch auction is firstly it is cheaper than, uh, than raising IPOs because whenever we look at an IPO process then we have to hire services of a merchant banker and of course now these fees can be high so depending on the type of services which we are going for either we are going for underwriting or, or best effort basis the fees will fluctuate however there will be some additional fee which will be there compared to a Dutch auction. So if we compare it price wise, then from the company's perspective, the cost of which is there for a Dutch auction is lower as compared to the cost the company will shell out for an IPO. And next is the price that clears the market becomes the market price for all the bidders. So that's an advantage. So that way this ensures that uh, we have a certain quantum of shares which are to be allocated. So once we receive bids from all of the willing market participants, then we are able to basically figure out the price which the market is willing to pay to purchase this, this particular uh, uh, outstanding lot of shares. So this can be considered as another advantage. So this is one of the concepts which may be tested on the FRM part one examination. We will be discussing more such interesting concepts in our upcoming videos. So do stay tuned and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel Thank you.